Hey guys, it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm, and today we're finally going to put this Dana 60 axle back together. Now if you want to see how we took it apart, you can check right up here. I have a whole video on disassembly, and also on how you put your carrier and your pinion back in. But today, let's finish putting the rest of this axle back together so we can get it back underneath the truck. First thing we need to do is to finish disassembling this axle. The only thing we haven't done yet is the bottom kingpin races. To remove these races, we have to knock them out using the dust cap. Do not try to replace these races unless you have new dust caps because you will destroy the dust caps in the process. I start out by using a bigger piece of rod. If you try to use a small punch, you'll probably just punch a hole in the dust cap and then that hole is just going to go bigger and bigger and you're going to have a hard time getting it out. So start out with something big. Once you finally start to get the race to move and you have enough room, then switch over to a smaller punch where you can get over the actual race itself and you can finally knock it out. So there's that dust cap. So that's why you gotta try to hit around the edge. You can tell I inverted it and I actually cut through it just a little bit right there. That's why you gotta work all the way around that edge. Now we just need to clean up any old silicone or RTV left behind. If you can, go ahead and throw your new races in the freezer and while those are cooling down, go ahead and put some silicone or RTV around the ceiling edge of your new dust cap. Now remember, the dome on the dust cap goes up when it's in your axle in its normal orientation. To install these new races, I had to roll it over so the dust cap will go and dome down. Once you get all your RTV in place, just go ahead and drop it in and then just do a quick check if you got any RTV on the bore, make sure you clean it out. And now we're ready to install our new race. Grab your race out of the freezer and now we're ready to install it. Now I did put a very light coating of grease around the outside edge of this race because it was really humid the day I was doing this just to prevent any condensation buildup. We go ahead and we stick it in there and we start to knock it in place. If you don't have a driver the right size to fit this race, just use your old race. Just go ahead and flip it over and you can beat on that side and you don't have to worry about messing up the face of your new race. Take your time when you're getting this started. You want to get it started nice and straight. There's a couple times here where it got just a little crooked. So just kind of knock on one side that's a little high and then once you get it straight it'll go in real easy. Before we insert this bearing, we need to make sure it's well packed with grease. Now you can pack these by hand, or you can use a bearing packer like I am here. I really like this handy packer that I got off of Amazon. It's a little less messy, but I think it's a lot quicker than trying to pack these bearings by hand. I'll post an affiliate link in the description down below. And just for a little tip on using this handy packer, while you're pressing down on it, just kind of rock it around, and that helps to push that grease up in there a little bit better. Now we're ready, we'll just drop our bearing in there and let's get our seal. So we're going to take our seal, we're just going to put a little bit of a real light thin coating of silicone right around the edge and real light. So you can see it there, just a real light coating, we don't want it too thick. Now I've got a 2 and 1 16th socket that fits over this thing perfect. You might not have one. You can just try to use a piece of pipe, maybe if you can find one about right. The last thing I'm gonna do, there's a bunch of extra grease from where we packed it on the inside. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and rub on that seal. Part of my axle rebuild is I'm gonna install these outer axle seals. So on a Dana 60, the only seals you have are the ones right beside the chunk. It doesn't have any outer axle seals. And that's why my axle tubes were full of gunk and whenever I pressure rossed it, I actually got a bunch of grime and grit in my bearings. That's why I had to rebearing everything. So I'm gonna try these outer axle seals and see how they work. 
I'm in the southeast. I know there's going to be mud. I know there's going to be water. So I'm going to try to go ahead and seal up that tube on the outside and on the inside. Just have two seals for all that stuff to get through and work a little bit better. Before we install these new outer axle seals, we're going to pack that inside cavity full of grease. Now we're just going to run a bead of high temperature RTV just on the inside of both of the lips of the seal. All right, now let's put this in the axle tube. Well, these are going to be a pretty tight fit. Start out by just pressing these new seals in by hand. It's going to be messy, but you should be able to get it at least halfway in before you have to switch over and start using a driver. Well, the direction said to lightly tap it but not drive it so i don't know exactly what that means so we're just going to tap real easy one tip is whenever you select your driver go with a smaller driver than you think you need that way you don't accidentally cut the lip of that seal now that we have our seal installed we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our axle and we're going to install it we're going to make sure we get it fully seated all the way and we're just going to make sure that we have some clearance between the seal and the yoke of that u-joint to make sure that it's not going to rub any so that's good i felt it go all the way and hit bottom and we're not hitting that seal Before we put our knuckle on, we're going to go ahead and put our studs. Now this is the passenger side knuckle. This is the side that the new steering arm will go on since we're doing crossover steering. So all this kit came from off-road design and you can include the stud kit or you cannot. These are high strength ARP studs. Here they are here. They're, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a long side and a short side. The short side is what goes down into the knuckle and they recommend just hand tight. They do also recommend some locking compound. So I'm gonna use some Loctite Red, and we're gonna get these installed. These studs only need to be hand tight, so there's no need to go too crazy with them. Just go ahead and get them down, get them pretty snug, and then I just use a pair of vice grips to grab the center of that stud, and then I can back that nut off. Now also keep in mind, clean up any Loctite that comes out of the threads so we have a nice clean mating surface. All right, so we're just gonna slide our knuckle on. We're gonna put the top on first. And then slide the bottom over. And we're just gonna let it sit right there. And let's go prep our bottom cap. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of grease. I'm gonna put it on the pin. What I'm really worried about is what's going to go over that seal. Now we're going to take our black RTV. We're going to put a little bit around the base. Now we're just going to smooth it out, smear it around. All right, if you look at this bottom cap, you can tell it's a little bit different. There's a recess here. It only goes on one way. That goes towards the outside. Take your time, it'll finally go. Now we're just gonna install our four bolts. That bolt doesn't feel right, so we're gonna go get another one. This hole doesn't feel quite right, so I'm just gonna chase these threads with a tap. See if that helps. Oh, that feels much better. All right, so now that I've got them all started, I know this kind of seems backwards, but now I'm gonna take them out one at a time, put just a little bit of red Loctite on them. The reason I didn't put Loctite on first was just in case I ran into that exact problem. I wanted to make sure everything lined up first. Now we're gonna to torque them. The torque specs call for 70 to 90, so we're going to shoot for 80. If you get the Kingpin rebuild kit from Off Road Design, it will come with a new seal for the top. Now, there's two different styles of seals, so pay attention to which one comes out. 
We don't want to put these on until we're to this point. If we try to put this seal down on there and set the knuckle over that, there's a good chance we're probably just going to pinch that seal. So instead, we're going to put it on now. Just going to very easily just push it down there. I did lube that up with just a little bit of grease. You may have to kind of move your knuckle around a little bit. Now we're going to take our new bushings. I had to get new bushings. The driver's side on mine was cracked and in a couple pieces. Just going to lube up the grooves inside. Put a little bit around the outside. Now this bushing will only go in one way. There's a groove in your knuckle and a ridge on the bushing. Well, it'll only ride in that one spot. Now we can take our spring retainer and our spring. And now let's grab our top cap. So just like with our bottom cap, we just put some RTV on it, spread it around. And we'll just get this whole started. You will have to press down on this son. We're just gonna take our time and slowly get it all the way down. Just make sure that whenever you're tightening these bolts that you work all the way around that top cap so you can pull it down evenly. All right, so now I've got everything down. For our torque it, I'm gonna take them out one at a time. Loctite. So now it's time to torque it down. The torque specs are exactly the same, 70 to 90. So we're gonna shoot for 80. And that feels good. It's definitely got some preload on it, but it still moves back and forth nice and smooth. So the passenger side is still the same at this point as the driver's side. We're just gonna put our seal in real gently. We're gonna put in our pre-greased bushing. Same thing, it'll only go in one way. Now let's go get the high steer arm. All right, so now we're ready to put our high steer arm. We've already got our RTV on the bottom. Our spring, our spring retainer are in place over our bushing. Now, if you go with this high steer kit from Off-Road Design and you get the studs, it also comes with tapered nuts. It does have a specific torque sequence to it. You're supposed to loop the threads and the tapered seat with motor oil. I'm just using ATF. Now we're going to tighten these down to 110 foot-pounds. Loosen them and retighten them. We're going to do that three to five times, and then on the final time, we'll torque it down to 110 foot pounds and we'll be done. Now, you will have to push down, kind of like the other cap, just a little bit to get these tapered nuts started. Just like the other top cap, we're just going to take our time and we're going to work our way evenly around this new high steer arm to pull it down. All right, so we finally hit bottom, so now let's go grab the torque wrench. I've got it strapped down so I can try to torque it down. Got my torque wrench set at 110. So that's one. So now we're just gonna loosen these up and retighten them three to five times and then on the final time, we'll be done with it. Before we go ahead and put our axles back in, I wanna go ahead and start prepping this spindle. So since I got it off, now's a good time to replace this inner spindle bearing and clean these up because I'm sure if you saw my hubs, a lot of the grease in there was pretty dirty. So there's the inner bearing spindle. The proper way to pull this is probably gonna be with a slide hammer with some internal puller fingers. I don't have one. Instead, we're just gonna put it in the vise and we're just gonna try to use a, a big punch. Just gonna go slow and take our time. 
As you drop it down, you can feel it hit the groove and hit the top of that bearing. Just make sure that you work all the way around that bearing. It should come out pretty easy. It's not in there very tight. So there's that old bearing out. Now we're gonna take this spindle over to the parts washer, try to clean up a lot of that old grease. So we're back from the parts washer. We got everything cleaned up pretty good. Now we're just gonna try to clean off some of these diesel residue. If you order this new bearing kit from Off-Road Design like I did, it'll come with two new seals and your new spindle bearing. So we're just gonna take some grease. I'm gonna pack the inside of this bearing. So I've got it just laying on a shop rack here just to protect those threads. I went ahead and I, I picked a, a driver that's a little bit bigger than my bearing so I can get it started. Try to get it started nice and straight. Now that I've got it almost flush, I'm gonna change out to a smaller driver. So this is the outer stub shaft. The big seal around the outside, I think that came off whenever I was washing it. We still have this little seal right here. Should be able to just pick it off with a screwdriver real easy. Whenever you pull it off, you'll notice that the lip, well, you can't even hardly see it, but there you can. That lip goes towards the inside. Now we've got this thrust washer here. Same thing, it has a recess in it. It goes towards the universal. Now we'll just knock this dust cap off. So we've got our new dust cap. I just put a real light coat of grease on the inside and it should just kind of slide right up there. This lip goes towards the hub. And we're gonna take our I think this is bronze thrust washer. Same thing, we're just gonna take a little bit of grease, try to hit that inside lip, and that inside recess goes towards the universal. Just slide that up. So we got our new seal. We're just gonna take and we're gonna pack that lip with some grease. Now we're just gonna slide it the void or the lip towards the universal. It will be snug as it gets up there to the machine surface. All right, so we've got our big outer seal. I'm just gonna take a little bit of grease and put it on this, on the inside. I wouldn't worry about packing this void just yet because by the time you get it on there, it's just gonna all be squished out. Now this one you do kind of have to force on there. So this inner seal here, the lip goes towards the universal. This big outer seal, the lip goes towards the hub. So we're all done. So now let's go slide this back in the housing. Now before you reinsert your axle, make sure you get it nice and clean and I also recommend either a light coat of grease or a light coat of oil that'll help it slide over those seals a little bit better so we don't tear them. Before we put the spindle back on, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some more grease right here around this spindle bearing. We're also gonna put a light coating here where that seal rides. So before we put our spindle back on, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pack this area here with some grease, like I've already done. We don't need to fill it up completely or else it's just gonna go everywhere whenever we put our spindle on. But we do wanna get some grease in there for those seals. Last thing we're gonna do before we put our spindle back on, we're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on this mating surface. All right, so we're getting ready to put the spindle back on the knuckle. Keep in mind, this bolt pattern is asymmetrical, so it's only gonna go on one way. 
The easiest way is to remember that where your locking tab goes is going to be up. I'm going to do the same thing on our caliper bracket. We're just going to put some anti-seize on. Remember where that set screw came out, it's going to go towards the bottom. Next, we're going to do our dust shield. After our dust shield, we've got the ring. Now we're ready for our washers and our nuts. Now we're just gonna put our washers and our nuts back on. All right, now we're gonna torque these down to 65 foot-pounds. Before I grease up this spindle, I thought I'd show you how the spindle nut works. So as you can see, this first or inner spindle nut, it's got a little protrusion on it right there. That's going to go out. So obviously you would put your hub on, you've got a seal, your inner bearing, and then your outer bearing. And you're going to start this spindle nut on, and according to the service manual for this truck, we're going to torque it to 50 foot-pounds, then we're going to back it off 90 degrees. Then we're going to take our locking ring, and it will only fit on one way. And we're going to try to line those two holes up. Now, in this instance, it just happens to be perfect. But if it doesn't, a lot of times you can just rotate it around and then it'll fit on there. Now you take your outer spindle nut and you tighten that up. And that's what keeps your spindle nuts tight. So let's get all this off here and grease everything up so we can start putting it back together. So not only do we want to grease our spindle, but we also want to grease this hub. So this area right in here, in front of this bearing, there's a recess there in between this race and that bearing. We want to pack that with plenty of grease too. All right, now we're just going to slap this hub on. take our outer bearing put it in there now we're going to get our inner nut and what I find is easiest let's go ahead and put it in your spindle nut socket it's a lot easier to get it started that way now we're just going to snug it up a little bit while we're turning this. All right, so we just there got a little bit of pressure, so we're going to stop. And we're going to go get the torque wrench. So we got the torque wrench. Sent to 50 foot pounds. While we're tightening it, we're going to be spinning this.
Alright, that says it's 50. Now what I like to do is I like to give it a good spin. Then I'm going to back it off. Now we're going to retorque it. Alright, after doing that twice, now it's time to back it off 90 degrees. So keep in mind where your wrench is. And that ought to be real close to 90 degrees. Now we're going to take this locker here. Alright, so now we've got our inner nut and our locking washer on there. So now we're just going to put on our outer spindle nut. I like to put it down in this spindle nut socket. Get it started by hand. So there's 50 foot pounds. And it's locked. I like to actually put just a little bit more on the locker. Now let's get this hub in there. All right, so now we're gonna put this hub in. We've got everything kind of greased up. We don't wanna get super heavy with the grease in this. Just enough to kind of help everything move along, but not so much that that, that engagement gear is not gonna be able to move back and forth. There it goes. Now we're going to put this snap ring on the end of the axle. You might have to reach back here and move that axle out just a little bit. Here we go, we've got that in. Now we need to put in this big snap ring that retains it. You could just get one side started. A lot of the times you can just kind of push it in. If you can't get it to push in, you can just take a small screwdriver. Now we're just going to take our inner spring, just going to get a little bit of grease on it. It's going to go in there. We've got our spring in, then we're just going to put this gear in. We're going to find where our little keeper screw goes. And that's just a little Phillips. Before we try to put this the outer hub assembly on, the one that lets you select lock or free. We're going to go ahead and reassemble it here. It's going to be a lot easier. So you don't have to take it completely apart like I did, but I wanted to be able to clean everything up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of grease on this O-ring seal. We're going to do the same thing on this O-ring right here. So just going to put a little bit of grease in these threads. Same thing as before, we don't want to go super heavy. We just want everything to move nice and smooth. Alright, now that we've got everything pre-greased, pre that spring goes in there with this cup up. This part is going to go down. And you'll have to play with it here just a little bit to get it to seat all the way to the bottom. And if you screw it most of the way out, 
that's going to be locked. Then take a socket. This is an inch and five sixteenths. We're going to place it in there, turn it upside down so that we can hold, hold this down so we can get our screw started. Now remember we should be close to lock. So once we feel that engage, then we can put our screw on. Now remember that is just plastic, so we don't want to go crazy with it. We don't want to strip it out. And now let's just make sure that it works. It's working. All right, let's go put it back on the axle. All right, now we're ready to put this back on. Now keep in mind, these little tabs here will fit. It'll only go on in a certain area, kind of like that. Now we're just gonna get a couple of these bolts started and we'll tighten them up and we'll make sure the hub works. Now we're just gonna tighten these up. Now let's see if it works. So it locked, and then it went to free spool. All right, now we got left is our calipers, wheels, and then we can get this thing off the table. All right, before you put your caliper on, your inner brake pad, It actually slides on first. Now we'll grab our caliper and we'll try to slide that over. Now keep in mind, you may need to put a C-clamp and back up your piston just a little bit. Now let's put it on. All right, so we got it in there. All right, now that we got it in there, it's time to put back our wedge. All right, if you can ever get this wedge started back, All right, now that we've got this driven in here, you can just put our set screw back. Now we're ready for wheels. And let's work on this tie rod. All right, so I upgraded this heavy duty tie rod from Off-Road Design. It's inch and a half by three eighths wall. This thing is super beefy. All I did was I just adjusted it to the length of my old one, dropped it in. I've just got it in here nice and loose right now. I don't want to tighten everything down until I get it underneath the truck. I make sure everything looks good before I give it the final torque. So let's go ahead, we'll put our wheels on. Let's get this thing off the table finally. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below.